of the North Carolina Historical Review are now available online through the North Carolina Digital Collections. And Jeffrey, I'm sure, will post the URL to that collection in the chat box here in just a minute. Um, this, uh, the quarterly review was first published in the spring of 1924, and it quickly established and man maintains through today a reputation for scholarly excellence. Access to these new digital volumes is free, and the full text of each of the 176 issues is searchable. That digitization was made possible through an IMLS grant, and uh, I encourage you to go take a look. I went, went in and looked at some of them. It's some old stuff, folks. That's I'll tell you that. Um, I'd like to encourage, if anybody has a question at any point during today's presentation, just chat away, and uh, we'll answer things as we go along. The Government and Heritage Library also participates in Second Saturday programs. These are programs of the Department of Cultural Resources, and that's where the State Library resides within state government. And um, all of the arms of DCR, the Department of Cultural Resources, sponsor programs on the Second Saturdays through the sun summer. So these are programs that our Government and Heritage Library, or GHL, will be taking part in um, this summer. They'll be at the Charlotte Hawkins Brown Historic Site with um, exhibiting genealogy materials in July. And then I love this. The Old State Capitol uh, has the... the the old uh, state library that's in the uh, Capitol here in Raleigh. It's kind of cool. So what else is going on down at the Government and Heritage Library? Well, they are working on marketing and outreach. I say that the GHL is one of the best kept secrets in state government because so many people don't know about them. So we're trying to get the word out about what all they offer and can do for our users, employees in state government, legislators, um, and other government officials. So they have developed a marketing and outreach team and they're getting um, cranked up right now. One of the services that the GHL provides in state government is that they provide cataloging services and um, that includes holdings information for agency libraries throughout state government. So that includes the libraries in the Labor Department, Transportation, Art Museum. There's one at the Executive Mansion even. And then uh, legislative libraries. And so we have just started working with the Museum of Natural Sciences to see if they would like to join our program. The benefit of that is that we do uh, some of the cataloging for them, but also um, it makes their resources more available throughout state government. I mean, how else are we ever going to know what's in the uh, collection at the governor's mansion if it's not in the library for the blind and physically handicapped is another section, another part of the state library. And they offer a summer reading program for their patrons, both for children and adults. I thought this was so cool because they're, they're already working with the Museum of Natural Sciences to plan their end of the summer program, and that's going to be a tactile program. So people are going to be able to come in and actually feel something. I don't know if that's going to be frogs or what, but um, it's going to be an interesting program. I'm sure I look forward to dropping in on that. So I'm going to move on now to library development, which is the third section of the state library, and the one that works more closely with libraries around the state, and is probably the section that is more familiar to all of you. Library Development, or LD, has a new blog, and I encourage everybody to sign up for it. Has anybody already signed up for the blog? Um, it's pretty cool. I have found it to be very interesting, the, the posts so far. 
it's for any library staff. It's not just for people at the top or directors, although we did automatically sign up all the library directors for it. Oh, thanks, Becky. Yeah, it's got... posted the um, URL there. You can select how often you want to hear from the blog, from a monthly digest of all the posts, or you can be emailed every time a post is made. There's not that much um, activity right now, so I, I don't think it's uh, burdensome. Here's what it looks like. So you can see a sample post. Um, thanks, Sarah. I think it's interesting, too. And I felt that we haven't been doing a really good job you all. So this is a big step in that direction, I think. Um, so there we had five new library directors all around, you know, in the recent months. So we highlighted all of them, including pictures. So I encourage you to subscribe to the blog. You can see right there that you can select whether you want it monthly, weekly, or every new post. And we're always interested in, um, if you've got something that you'd like us to get out, um, Lisa, you enjoyed the silent explosion of knowledge video. Shared it. Okay, cool. Good. So people are sharing some of our stuff. So you share back with us and let us know things that you would like us to share out on the blog, and we'll be happy to do that. So that's kind of big news for us. Um, moving on, uh, more big news is our LSTA program for the year. The grant awards have been announced. I want to thank the LSTA Advisory Committee for their work. They, these people actually review these grants and help us decide which ones get funded. So um, that is a hard-working committee, and uh, I want to make sure they know that we appreciate what they do. The LSTA consultant is Ray Oldham. Let me give you an overview of what we've done for the year. So here is a chart showing the, num the amount of funds requested. And I'm going to start at the bottom of this chart. If you look at the total available row, you can see that the total amount of money available has dropped from 2012-13 to 2013-14. And that is because of the sequestration in Washington. That hit the Institute of Museum and Library Services and their grants to states program is like 70% of their budget. It's the vast majority of funding that they give out is LSTA dollars to state libraries. And so they had to cut the funding for that program when sequestration took effect. You can see that the amount requested in the easy grant program went up as well as the project grant program. And obviously in an individual grant. So the maximum amount of money that you could ask for in um, the easy grants went up from 25,000 tops to 50,000 tops. And same with our planning grants, you could go from, they went up from a top level of $20,000 to actually $50,000. So people could ask for larger grant amounts in those grant categories. So what did we award? Well, here comes that chart. We awarded 47, no, no, 28 easy grants, 14 project grants, and a total of 42 grants this year. You can see the difference that we were able to fund just over 60% of the amount requested. So several factors are coming together that all mean that our grant um, this grant program is getting more competitive. We have less money to award. We're awarding larger top grant amounts, and more people are applying. So, or maybe not in this year, actually. We had 68 applications and 42 this year. I take that back. Never mind. So here's, the, here's where you 
you're going to find some really good information about the grant program on the State Library website. We have a list of all of the funded projects. And if you want to find out what the project is about, you can click on the library name and you can read the abstract for that project. So you may be interested in seeing what sorts of projects were funded and this will help you do that. And there is the URL for that. Any questions at this point? Not seeing any, I'm going to move on to one of our statewide projects. And this is one of the projects carried out by the State Library with LSTA dollars, and that is the NC Cardinal Program. That's our consortium of public libraries that with the goal of sharing resources and having a single online catalog. We met. The Cardinal staff met with Cardinal Library staff a month ago and we formed three new task forces because we are interested in getting input from the members of this consortium about how the consortium should move forward in the future. The task forces are cataloging and a big part of that is going to be deduplication. You can imagine as we're putting all these disparate catalogs together, there's a lot of duplication. Uh, we've got a resource sharing task force and a governance task force. All of these have been filled with members and um, the resource sharing task force is looking at our policies and procedures for sharing documents. We've turned on sharing across all of the Cardinal libraries. So if you live in Haywood County, when you log on to your catalog, you can see books in all of the other Cardinal libraries as well as Haywood County. And if you see a book that you would like to get, you can request it and it will be delivered to the Haywood County. Some um, policies and procedures and input from the actual consortium members on those policies and procedures governing that. And then governance generally. Uh, we're starting to really sort of push this out. Um, it started off with sort of a top-down model just to try to get the consortium up and running. It's up and running very successfully now, so we're getting more input and looking actively for ideas from the field about how to make it better. Some interesting information about how we're doing with the consortium. Over 55,000 items transited in May. Now this is not just um, within your library system, but among the Cardinal Library systems as well. Over 380,000 items checked out in May, and about 4,000 new patrons were added to the existing database. Will RDA workshops be offered to non-cardinal? Sure, I think so, but Tanya's on the, Tanya's with us today, joining us, so maybe Tanya could um, chat back to Becky. Can you answer that question? Thank you, Tanya. Um, you can see Tanya's email address. She's the manager of this program and would be happy to talk to anybody who has interest about it. I'm going to be talking about continuing education in just a little bit later, too, so we'll hear more about that. Okay, while Tanya's typing, oh yes, the workshops will be open to all. Thanks, Tanya. Any other questions? If you have a question, I hope you will type it in. And now is the perfect time because we're about halfway through, and I thought it would be a great time for... A break. So I wanted to ask you all, does anybody have exciting vacation plans this summer? I'd like to live vicariously through you by hearing where you are going and what you're planning to do for vacation. Will somebody share with us? I don't know where this picture is of. I just went and got it off the web. Oh, 
Oh, I know Tanya just got back from a vacation. Maybe she's going to be typing about that or else more about RDA. Yeah, can you imagine two weeks on a train? And you all, they didn't have wireless access. I would have just been prostrate. I, I, do, I don't know if I could have done that. Montreal, well, that sounds nice and cool. Anywhere not in the south sounds nice and cool, although it really hasn't even gotten hot yet. I'm already dreading it. Well, cool. If anybody else wants to share their vacation plans, I would love to hear. And I guess I will say that our break is over and we'll move back into information about, this is about a new initiative that's taking place both in North Carolina and nationwide. A whole consortium of organizations have been meeting now for, oh, maybe three years. And uh, they've been funded by the Gates Foundation. And the way I see this is this, this edge is like the fourth round coming out of the Gates Foundation. So for those of you who've been around a while, you know that the Gates Foundation started off giving us computers. And they actually would just buy the hardware and put it in the library. And then that was great, and we all enjoyed getting those computers. And then three or four years later, we were saying, hey, our computers are getting old. We need more computers. So they came back around for a second round and at that point, I think they could sort of see the handwriting on the wall of where we were heading with this, and they weren't real happy. They didn't want to get into the business of constantly buying us new computers. So they did do a third round of hardware grants, but they added some other requirements. So instead of just giving us the computers, uh, libraries had to provide some level of matching funds. They had to attend an advocacy training to better equip us to be able to go to local government officials and uh, explain the necessity for local funding for our First of all, they got a whole group of organizations together. It's not just the Gates Foundation. It's also the Urban Libraries Council, American Library Association, Public Library Association, Web Junction, blah, blah, blah. And the one that I find most interesting, the partner uh, organization, is the International City County Management Association, or ICMA. And that is your city and county managers. So we were getting... If, if that's, I mean, I think what they're thinking is if that's where we have to go to get the money to buy new computers, then let's go ahead and get them involved in planning this project from the start. And they have been involved. And interestingly, now here's just a little side note, the, uh, the man who has been on this EDGE planning committee for three years now is a guy named Ron Carley, and he recently moved to Charlotte to become the city manager in Charlotte. So now we have him right here in the state of North Carolina. Um, and we're going to use him, let me tell you. So what they've done is the EDGE initiative has um, provided some tools for libraries to use to continue to be able to offer technology to their patrons. And the tools are, it's that fourth bullet down, it's an assessment. Well, first of all, they developed benchmarks. So this is what good technology services would look like in a library. And they worked really hard to keep these from being numbers driven, like you have 70 computers, which may not be enough for a giant urban library and may be completely out of uh, the realm of possibility for a small rural library. So they've, they've worked to keep the benchmarks uh, agnostic. I guess, in a way, so they'd be relevant for all sized libraries. And then what they've done is they have put together an online assessment tool. Then they get some information back once they've completed the assessment, and it says, okay, here's how your library is doing, uh, offering um, technology. 
and here are areas you might want to work in. Um, it's it's a smart assessment in that if if it's if there's something you know it says like are you offering these services for Spanish speakers and say you don't have any Spanish speakers in your the the uh, service area of a particular branch you don't get dinged for that you just say hey that that's not that's not what this branch is working on so it's not something we're going to be measuring ourselves. We don't want to take a hit in um, how we're scoring on these benchmarks. It's not really, you're not really in it for the score, you're in it to kind of figure out where it is that you might want to put your efforts to improve the technology services in a particular library. So that's a second bullet under the suite of tools. And then finally, and I love this, is that it also gives you communication tools to help you convey, okay, we really are not doing a very good job in this particular area. It gives you the communication tools to take to your local officials to say, hey, do you know that all the other libraries in North Carolina are able to do X, Y, Z, but we can't? We need to get up to speed on this in this area. So it's an advocacy tool that you can take and use with your local city, county, management officials to, to prove the case for the technology in your library. So this is going to be launching nationwide next year, starting in January. But they're piloting it in seven states this summer just to see how does it work? Are the benchmarks meaningful? Are they working for the actual libraries? Ah, Sarah, the assess yes, so Sarah, you must be from one of our seven. To the EDGE initiative so that they can tweak the whole process, the, the benchmarks, the assessment, before rolling it out nationwide. Uh, the assessment here in North Carolina is due July 31st. Isn't that great timing, y'all? We told them. This is summer reading, but they didn't seem to care. Do we need more information before we begin, or should we dive on in? Um, Jeffrey's answering that. This is so great to have this wonderful staff, y'all. I cannot say enough good things about them. They all know what, exactly what they're doing. So you can see the tools that are included as part of this. You can go ahead and start the assessment. Thanks, Jeffrey. Um, so there's the benchmarks. There's the online assessment tool. There's training for library staff. And then those communication tools for talking to your mayor, your county commissioner, or whoever. And I am most excited about those communication tools. We have already heard from, there were some early, early uh, pilot libraries in two states, Oklahoma and Texas, like four libraries did this like a year ago. And talk about sacrificial lambs, they really were, but um, the feedback from those projects absolutely underscored how important this is as a communication tool. Um, and it, it, it makes actually communicating with your community leaders easier. Um, so people were very excited, um, the ones who um, took part in this early. So one of the things we're really excited about is some of the benefits that we see coming out of this project. Not necessarily in this pilot phase, but in the actual phase when it rolls out. It's going to help libraries see where they are and make a case for where you want to be. It's going to give you the ammunition you need. Um, these are the findings from the early, the early pilots. It serves as a conversation starter with both your staff and local officials. So as somebody put it, it's a much needed for continued or increased reinvestment in public access technology. And what I'm excited about, it's going to give us a snapshot, both statewide and on a national level, of how libraries are doing and what they need. 
So that can help guide the state library in terms of developing statewide projects, how we um, focus our IMLS money, maybe state money, who knows. So the national launch is scheduled for early 2014, and I hope that all of you who are not already part of this um, pilot who are in public libraries will take part once that is rolled out. It's going to be um, really valuable for all of us, I think. So that's the EDGE initiative. And another new initiative that's data-driven is our annual public library sur survey. The survey isn't new. What's new is that we have some new data elements. Joyce Chapman is our consultant for data analysis, and she does a fabulous job. And so because we are so invested in the importance of data and making our case with data, we convened a public library statistics working group to review what statistics we collect. These are always changing over time. You can imagine technology changes, formats change. So uh, many of the data elements um, change, and that comes from the national level. So much of the survey is required by the Census Bureau, and those are questions that we cannot change. But there are because that data helps us with planning and decision making, and it serves as an advocacy tool at the national level, we think this is pretty important. So you will see that there are going to be some new data elements, and then there's going to be some cool new data coming out of those um, surveys once that has been collected. Another heads up is that we're changing the software that we use to collect this data. We've been using Bibliostat, and we're moving to a new product called LibPass, and that will combine the services provided by Bibliostat Connect and Collect into a single tool, and that's going to give us enhanced functionality and reporting features. And so we're not the only ones that can get in and work with that data. You can do that as well. So we'll be having some workshops about that. I'll tell you more about those in a slide or two. Another new initiative, any questions about the, the data? Okay, I'll move on then to our another, another new initiative, and that's our ebook committee. This isn't brand new. This has been working for a while now. Um, we convened this group to advise us about ebooks because uh, about two thirds of public libraries in the state offer ebooks through some wonderful consortium consortia that are um, managed by um, Ruth Ann Copley in Davidson County. About one third don't, and we are concerned that they are not able to offer this service to their patrons. And is there some way that the state can help them um, get those ebooks out? We're working. The committee has met several times and has come up with some priorities. So we've reviewed the other consortial models, as mentioned in the second book bullet, and we've determined our priorities and constraints. What we're doing now is we're working with NC Live to develop a workable model for North Carolina. And this is, as you know, a very swift We don't have any available monies at this point in time to put into this effort. So even if we had the perfect solution, we wouldn't be able to fund it at this point. So stay tuned is all I can say. We're still working on it. Um, in library development, we also have staff who work with the Friends of North Carolina Public Libraries. And here's some information about what their activities. They're going to be having an annual meeting in October, and I will tell you that's a lot of fun. I went to the meeting last year, and it's a good group. Uh, it's a great way to keep your finger on the pulse of what our library friends are thinking and talking about. So we would, I would encourage you to encourage your friends to join this um, statewide group 
and to attend that statewide meeting. If they can't, in the spring we have regional meetings of friends groups and those are a lot of fun as well. The friends are featuring uh, a NCLA program featuring the our poet laureate Joseph Bethanti and that will be called On the Same Poem. They're paying for this so I'm I'm impressed. Um, so I definitely plan to attend that program and perhaps you would like to as well. For more information, you can see Molly Westmoreland for information about the Friends. Speaking of conferences, the State Library is offering scholarships to two conferences coming up this year. One is the Association of Rural and Small Libraries, or ARSL. They met here in Raleigh last fall, and we sponsored a bunch of scholarships, and people loved it. This is it's a great conference and it's targeted to rural and small libraries and very useful. So that's going to be held in Omaha, Nebraska this year and we're funding 10 scholarships. We're also funding scholarships to NCLA, 50 of them, and uh, that will cover the conference registration and hotel. It's going to be held in Winston-Salem. Uh, information about these scholarships will be going out in July. So watch the website or, hey, why don't you go ahead and sign up for the LD blog and that way you can be sure that you won't miss that announcement when we start talking about now the scholarships are available. Moving on, I'm going to talk about continuing, continuing education next. Kelly Brannock is our CE consultant and she's planning a rich and full slate of activities for the fall. Um, these are, will also be advertised come July, after July 1, and they'll mostly be advertised on the train station, but I'm sure we'll be making announcements on the blog as well. We're bringing back Cheryl Gould. She was so popular the last time around uh, with her customer service workshops, and the dates are right there. Um, we don't have the locations nailed down exactly or at least that I can share with you so stay tuned and you'll find out where those will be held around this trainer session for them on customer service in August if you are a master trainer you might be interested in finding out more about that we're introducing something new called Wednesday webinars. These will be held monthly beginning in July on a variety of data topics. And Joyce Chapman is going to be conducting these first two in July and August. And those will be about our new data collection tool, LibPass. Because we think there's going to be a lot of demand from all of the um, data coordinators on the local level, these these uh, sessions will be um, restricted just to the people who actually have to fill out that survey. But we will continue to offer um, this training. These will be recorded and made available afterwards. It will be posted online, including on YouTube. And once we get all the data reporters from public libraries trained, we'll open it up to others <clears throat> as well. Um, so that's for staff who are completing the annual public library survey. What else are we offering this fall? Well, we're offering NC Live training and we're expanding it significantly. So we're offering the basic sessions as we have and we're adding some advanced sessions, but we're also adding a first ever NC Live kids workshop. So how can you use NC Live with our younger patrons? Also NC Live business, and NC Live Health. In the words of several workshop attendees from the last round of NC Live workshops, Basics in Advance, it said, one of them said, this seems like it's an essential training for every employee who works any public desk, not just reference staff or youth services staff. I'm quite knowledgeable about NC Live, but learned a lot of new search techniques that will be very helpful. I don't know if you could do this workshop any better. That's kind of high praise. So 
you might think about signing up for an NC Live workshop this fall. We're putting face-to-face -face training together on LibGuides. Another round of getting started with LibGuides will be held at three locations around the state for staff who are new to the software. Plans are underway for two new workshops, a half-day session on LibCal, and that's the calendar, and an all-new workshop on the advanced features in LibGuides. If your library's been waiting to activate their LibGuides account, you know the State Library provides LibGuides for all the public and community college libraries in the state. This would be the perfect time to get going on your LibGuides. Attend one of these sessions and get started. Some comments from past training. Very effective workshop. The hands-on time was really useful especially when the instructor helped individuals with their needs. It was good to build an actual LibGuide during the workshop. I had absolutely no prior experience with LibGuides, and I felt feeling, I left feeling ready to start using this tool for our library. So, okay, other topics are in development. Let me share a little information about them. These will all be posted on the CE Info Listserv and on the train station and, of course, the LD blog. Um, Every Child Ready to Read Outreach, we're going to do something on that. Offerings on digital literacy or training your patrons about technology in your library. Early literacy. NC Cardinal Reports. Serials and Acquisitions, RDA, and more. Here's some big news where change is coming to the from Web Junction to a new e-learning resource. It's a little premature to announce what that is, but it's got a lot of training in there, folks. So I think you'll be interested in hearing more about that. We'll, of course, announce that on the LD blog. Continuing with continuing education. State Library staff will be making presentations at the NCLA conference. If you can't make it to NCLA, we'll make sure that we um, share that information through webinars or viewing recordings on our YouTube channel. So um, you'll still be able to take advantage of that. The CE info list. Right there is the address. That continues to grow. We're up to 157 members. We hope anyone and everyone with an interest in continuing education will subscribe. It's a great place for just talking about continuing education, sharing on CE issues. If you're offering a workshop in your local library you can and you have some seats available, you can share and make it available to other people your neighbor libraries around you. Um, if you are a master trainer and have not received a message through the master trainer list serve in the last month, please contact Kelly Braniff because she needs to update your email address. We're developing a new LibGuide as a home for all the master trainers and their resources. So we want to stay in touch with the master trainers all around the state. Finally, we want to acknowledge and say thank you to two of our members from the Continuing Education Advisory Committee. And those two are Beth Bernhardt from UNCG's Jackson Library and Laura Davidson from Meredith College. Their committee appointments end in July, and we appreciate their years of service on the SEAC providing guidance, feedback, and assistance to the State Library in planning continuing education. Thanks also to their libraries for permitting them to take part. So everybody knows that we've got an NCLA conference coming up this fall. I've already mentioned our scholarships. We're excited about it, and I'm sure you are too. I asked staff to some of the um, staff from library development 
are presenting. There's going to be uh, a whole session on the EDGE initiative, and by this time we probably will have some preliminary feedback because the surveys will have been completed. So that could be really interesting if you're into data. On the same poem is the Joseph Bethanti Poet Laureate program that I mentioned earlier. Um, and then we've got some more programs being presented by some of the staff from the Government and Heritage Library. So these are genealogy, digitization, free resources from the GHL. That would be useful for anybody um, that works in a library in North Carolina because we can back you up in helping meet the needs of your patrons. NC Echo is pretty cool. That's a portal to a lot of digital materials. Um, and then I'm going to be doing a state library update face to face. So it's going to be like this, but I actually get to see people in the room for a change, and that'll be pretty exciting. And that concludes the update for today. There's my email address if you have and phone number if you have any questions or comments. Um, you can chat with us right now if you have any questions for Tanya, Jeffrey, or me. And otherwise, I will say thank you for attending today. I hope you learned something new. And your takeaway and to do as a result of attending today is to go back and sign up for that library development blog. You won't regret it. I see some people are typing, so I will sit and wait. Thank you, Lynn. Thanks for coming. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, Becky, Linda, Sarah. I was pleased to have...